Well, made it from here down to the beach. Beautiful day down at the beach. Lots going on. Just beautiful, especially when you consider it's towards the end of January. We should be rainy, windy, and nasty out here. Beautiful pictures. Beautiful day. Well, if you look closely right here, you see all that water beaded up on there. So to break these things in and make them so that you can use them, I get some black sand off the beach, get it wet, and rub it in. That way when the water starts running again, it won't beat up. It's all the surface tension's all broken, it'll go down. What'll happen if you leave those beads on there is that all the gold will float right over the top of it and you won't get anything at all in your pants. So what we're doing is we're just going to fill this up with water or with uh, uh, sand. It's all been wetted down good. Get these fit together. And then just rub this sand in there. As you can see, I got it real wet. So I've just got a bucket of it. And I'm working it in. The sand I got up off the beach. I'm just going to work it in good. What that'll do is it'll keep that surface tension down and it'll let all that let all that sand and gold drop down into those porous spots where it needs to be formed up. Back up. You look down in there and you don't see it bubbling up. You see it all settling down. No bubbles forming on that at all, hardly. I see a few, but I don't think they're too serious, so we'll just keep running. Alright, we're ready to dig some gold. salt water so they're dry and there's no oil on them otherwise I wouldn't be able to touch that in there but as you can see it's, it's working down 
I think I can see a little bit of gold in there, but not much. Kind of hard to really tell at this stage. Sometimes you can really see it. right here in this tailing edge right here. Second back of the black sands. See if it looks any different. Looks about like the same as the last bucket we ran. Really won't know how much gold I'm getting until I get her home and run it on the miller table. But I keep seeing a little flake now and then. This is off the bottom of that black sand layer. I'll take you over and show it to you here in a minute in a hole. house about 7 a.m. this morning. No, actually about 8 a.m. I guess. Got down here about 11, 11.30. It's now about 1 o'clock. About an hour before low tide. I like to make sure I'm working when the tide's going out. That way I don't get caught by a tide coming in while I'm all set up down here on the beach. I'm fat. I'm old. It takes me a long time to get off the beach, so having to rush it doesn't work. Okay, good for now. Well, there's the hole. The layer I'm trying to get is just above that blonde sand you see down there. So it's only about two, three inches deep of pay sand. The rest of that is just overridden. And it's only about a foot down today. It's been as low as deep as three feet. I found it as, as shallow as six inches, but very rarely at six inches. This is pretty good or at least good as far as it goes. So what happens is you end up cleaning off a spot on the beach about the size of the bottom of a small Volkswagen or something maybe. Depends on how much time you got. Anyway, I hope that helps. Well, here we are, back to the truck, getting ready to load everything back up. I want to point out a couple of things about the way I've been carrying this. I use the bungee cords to uh, hold everything on there. It's a pretty rough ride. You almost won't need four-wheel drive on these little carts to bring stuff up and down from the beach. So I'll undo all that. I've got to make it fit in my truck. That's what the ramp there is for. And it's going to go right into the back of that truck right there. So that's going to be the plan. I'll load her up and uh, uh, just show you what's going on here. But while we're here, I wanted to show you that right now, those buckets are all the buckets I used down there and I needed four of them. Now a square one is for hauling water. Because it's got a square flat bottom on it, it's easier to scoop up water down on the beach and that's why you carry that. So um, the other thing is you'll notice that there's a uh, there's a small uh, small uh, pump right there. I use that with a hose and a spray nozzle down there to clean my equipment up. It doesn't clean it up 100% but it's just enough to get it up off the beach, not get sand all over the inside of my truck. And trust me, it's a lot cleaner now than it was down at the beach. Although if you look at those buckets, they got sand everywhere. And I'll have sand all over the inside of my truck when I'm done. But hey, this is gold we're talking about. Okay, here goes. Handle won't stay 
won't fit in there. So I removed the pin on it. Slide it back underneath there. And I have a 2x4 that I slip underneath the wheels here to hold them in place. Shove the batteries up against it. And she's ready to go. Now, this, uh, This bucket is the cons from the day. Got about a half inch or so of cons in there. And uh, when I put it on the Miller table, I expect to see about oh, 80 to 100 pieces of gold floating down the uh, Miller table every time I put a little teaspoon down. So that's about how concentrated I think it is. We'll see. Okay, this is an exercise in removing black, uh, removing the magnetite out of the black sand. I thought I'd take a minute and show you what that kind of looks like. This is just a small sample of all the black sand that I brought back. I put it in this in this uh, pan. It's probably oh maybe three three eighths of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch thick uh, layer. Um, the, as I run a magnet through it, um, you'll see that it begins to pick up sand, and, it, and it's kind of amazing how well it does work. Uh, you see there's an awful lot of sand stuck on that magnet and uh, what I'm going to do is collect it into this gold pan and then uh, I'll pick all this up and because this takes a lot of time what I'm going to do is shut the camera off and then I'll come back as soon as I've got more of this picked up as you can see we've greatly reduced the amount of volume in there uh, I'm still dragging my magnet through. Now I'm actually putting the magnet down in there. Before I just try to hold it up above it. And all I'm trying to do is pick up that stuff that's still hanging in there. Now you can see they're still picking up some. So I'll continue to do that for a little bit longer. Really until I decide I've done enough of it. There's no real rhyme or reason to it other than all I'm trying to do is to reduce the amount of sand that I have to process on the miller table pick up what gold's left in there. Now the gold should still be down there in the bottom of this pan. It should not have gotten picked up with the magnet. However, it does get trapped with some of those grand sand particles. And so the gold or the, uh, the sand that I have in the gold pan, I don't know if you can tell how deep that is, but it's at least as deep as uh, the first little little ridge. So it's a good quarter inch or so thick, maybe a little bit thicker. Now I have to go through that five more times to ensure that I've got just magnetite that I'm hauling out of there and that I've got none of the gold and none of the other material that's, that should be left behind pulled out. Now, So when I go through there, if you think about it for a minute, and you can see the light colored sand back in here, but you can see the amount of material that I'm picking up. It's plausible that there should be that there might be some gold stuck in that. So I'll go through that, clean this up, and continually pass this through at least five times before I'm sure that I've got everything I want to get out of it. Okay, so this is the same pile of sand after the second pass through it. It's uh, well, it doesn't look like I removed much, but I removed uh, probably by weight about one third of what was in there. So uh, we're going to shut it off, shut off the camera, and we'll uh, go clean it some more, and we'll come back. And what I'm doing when I say I'm cleaning this, all I'm doing is I'm processing it by, by taking the magnet, picking up the black sand, and if it's not magnetite, then it'll get left behind, and I put it in a bucket, and continue to operate, or continue to run it, until I don't have anything that will pick up with the magnet any longer. That stuff goes back into a jar that I uh, then use for uh, processing on the Miller table. So when we're done, all we'll have in this flat or in this uh, mayonnaise jar is uh, either gold or that material that's not gold that's heavy. 
and all magnetite. All the magnetic material will be removed. Okay, this is the, uh, the third time that uh, I've cleaned the black sand and uh, this is the material that was left over after cleaning the black sand and I'm going to dump that out and this is how much black sand I got left out of that so as you can see it, it's worthwhile to go through this a couple of different times because I keep finding that there's some stuff in that what I thought was magnetite that is not magnetite it's probably gold and uh, other material. So I'm going to go through this two more times before it's ready to go. All right, good enough. That, folks, is why we take the magnet material out of the sand. After getting on separating it by volume, they're about 50-50. Now you can see why I really concentrate on getting that magnetite out of the black sand after I get it up from the beach. Well, I processed about four or five tablespoons of the concentrates, and uh, you can see that little trail of gold right behind the, the clothesline clip. And that's, uh, that's a whole lot less than I thought we were going to get. So. Uh, our plans of, uh, of 100 flakes per teaspoon, uh, no, we were getting about 20 to 25 flakes per teaspoon, so there's about 500 flakes there, and uh, you can appreciate just how small that really is. Alright, we'll fry her again another time. Have a good one.